Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is the data sheet for the SSI 2144 voltage-controlled filter. In a previous video, I designed a circuit to take the 0 to 3.3 pulse width modulation output of a microcontroller like the Adafruit Grand Central M4 and convert it to the minus 90 to 90 millivolts that the frequency control input pin here is expecting. And in this video, I would like to take a look at the Q control. The Q control controls the amount of feedback around four cascaded single pole filters. And it's a little hard to see here, but it's just one filter after the other. The filters are actually built as OTAC filters where the OTAs have differential outputs. So it's sort of a cross between something like a sequential profit five filter and a Moog ladder filter. So let's see what the data sheet says about the Q control. The frequency control is a voltage input, but the Q control is a current input summing node at ground. So it expects a current. So if we want to control with the voltage, we'll need to choose a resistance and assume it's ground at the input and then assume it's some voltage that we're providing it and then use Ohm's law to figure out what resistor we kind of need. All right, minimum resonance occurs at zero current. Oscillation will occur in current into the Q control reaches approximately 400 microamps equating to 10.7 volts using a resistor value of 26.7 kilo ohm in figure one. All right, so let's go look at figure one. Uh, here's figure one. Yeah, so here's the voltage that goes in. Here we're assuming that this terminal here is at ground. And it looks like this business here this 499 ohm, that value probably is not critical. And this 10 nanofarad, I'm guessing, isn't too critical either. This is just to filter out some gremlins. In theory, if this really was a pure current input at ground, this wouldn't be necessary. But of course, life is not ideal. Okay, and if we look back at this table, we see that the current control is given as a nominal range from 0 to 400 microamp. But it has a max of a milliamp. So as long as we target our circuit to be able to achieve this 400 microamp, if we go a little bit past it, I think that's okay. Actually over here, I see a max Q current at oscillation of 450. So maybe we do wanna push it a little bit further just in case. Assuming of course we want it to be able to oscillate, which we do, cause oscillation's fun. Okay, so I've pulled up Octave. Octave is an open source rewrite of MATLAB more or less, which I'm gonna use as a glorified calculator. A resistance is equal to a voltage divided by a current. So if I'm targeting 450 microamps and we have a PWM that at maximum is 3.3 volts, then we divide these and let me take out the R here and I get a resistance of 7K. And for reasons I'll explain in a little bit, let me actually take that and divide that by two because I'm going to actually implement this resistance as two resistors in series with the same value. Let's see, so I have 3666.7 and 3.6K is a common resistor value. So let's see, 3.6 times two gives me this. And if I take 3.3 and divide it by 7.2K, that gives me a little bit over that 450. It's closer to 460 microamps. And that seems good to me. And let's think about tolerances for a bit. So what if I multiply this here by 1.05? Okay, whoop. That doesn't look right. Oh, do I need more prints? I put my prints in the wrong spot. I don't need more prints. I just need to put them in the right place. Okay, so that doesn't get us to 450, but it gets us close. That'll probably work. And let's see, 0 0.95. That goes a little bit higher, but we're still well below 1,000 microamps, so I think that's okay. And let's think about 1% tolerance. That looks pretty good. And let's see, that looks pretty good. So I think 1% are pretty much the same price as 5% nowadays anyway, so might as well use 1%. So here's what I have in mind. I'll put a 3.6K resistor here and a 3.6K resistor here. 
and those are going to add up to 7.2k. And then over here, I'll stick that stuff we had on the data sheet. And I do this a lot. There's a thing on the data sheet. I don't quite totally understand what it's doing. I sort of vaguely understand what it's doing. I don't really know why they picked those particular values, but let's trust it. I don't think the values here are that critical. The thing to remember is that our Q control pin that's over here, so that's our Q control input, this is theoretically at ground. So theoretically, this is kind of like a ground out here. And so this is doing some sort of weird filtering, understanding that this is not really at ground. All right, so over here, we have our microcontroller PWM output, and that's feeding all of this stuff here. Now, the reason I split this up is I actually want to throw a capacitor in here. So I'm going to stick a capacitor in here to act as a one pole low pass filter to filter out the PWM signal. All right, so how should I choose this capacitance? Well, remember this over here is at ground. And if I compute the time constant associated with the capacitor, I can compute the cutoff as one over two pi RC. And the R that I need to plug in here, oh, let me say, here's the C, there's the C. The R that I need to plug in here, that's going to be the equivalent resistance seen looking out of the capacitor. So if I imagine taking some wire clippers and clipping out the capacitor and replacing this with a ohmmeter, where I'm also assuming that I'm zeroing out my voltage source over here, that's going to give me my resistance for this formula. And that will look like 3.6K to ground on the left and 3.6K to ground on the right. So that's 3.6K in parallel with 3.6K. So here we'll have an R of 1.8K. Let's see, so if I were to solve this formula for C, all right, C equal one over two times pi times R times FC. Let's see, R is 1.8K and Whoops, that's not K, that's K. And let's see, suppose you wanted something like, I don't know, a 200 hertz cutoff. People tend not to change Q a whole lot. It's kind of a set and forget parameter. All right, let's see. So that would be what? 440 nanofarad, something like that. Let's see. Let's, instead of putting the frequency here, let's try 470 nanofarad and see what frequency we get. 188 hertz, sure. And let's see, you could use 330 and get 267 hertz, or you could use something like, what's another common one? I guess 220 nanofarad, that would give you 400 hertz, something like that. And you could drop that even further if you wanted to have a higher cutoff. Now there's something else interesting on the data sheet. Here it says 900 ohms. And I can't find a reference to this 900 ohms anywhere else. So is this telling us that this control pin is more like something like a 900 ohm input impedance going to ground as a result of this junction here? In which case we might want to take that into account in our analysis. But again, I can't find any other information about what this 900 ohms means. And it would be pretty small relative to this 3.6K anyway, so I'm not gonna worry about it.